this is karan great great to see you all and uh, thank you for having me in this event and that to the last moment thank you mr anurag um i'll speak for 5 minutes about why i wrote this book the book is called the freedom manifesto and then uh, there'll be a little bit of a q and a and you can ask any questions that are in your mind so um i wrote this book for a very personal reason i was reflecting um, after my exit from white junior and i had some time to reflect i was reflecting a little bit on my 20s and 30s you know because i you know i was right like early like 40 40 when i started white hat junior and i felt that like my 20s and 30s were a little bit of a insecure confused kind of a time and uh, i was reflecting why that was um, there was a particular thing happening where all the batchmates that i had from iim and my engineering college they were going on a very straight linear line they were doing very well in their careers and i was following this very meandering kind of path right and i was uh, always feeling ki you know what happened why am i not able to follow the kind of the very straight line path that i was expected to follow after college and business school and i but yet there was a very strong urge to do certain things which i'll talk a little bit about and i kept kind of following my instinct and doing them right so for example when i was at the like a peak of my career i was doing very well in uh, in the in like you know i was handling a large business for craft in the us i decided to leave my job and uh, learn yoga and meditation for one year in 2012 i was in my i think early or mid 30s 33 34 years old and uh, my mother who was in her early 50s she had died from cancer it was a very debilitating kind of death and i had these very strong spiritual questions around why does life happen this way you know is this the is this the meaning of the whole existence so i really wanted to go very deep into my yoga and meditation practice so i left my job and uh, went from europe to india by road and then uh, spent 6 uh, months in an ashram in south india learning yoga becoming a yoga teacher and then uh, learning meditation and then kind of came back again after i came back from that experience i was like you know up, up i'll go back to the straight and narrow path and do well again and i did that and then i had this strong creative urge ki you know i've written some novels none of them are really world class now i have to be a full time writer so again i left my job that was that was the first time i'd become a c level person and i left my job again and this time i decided to write full time uh, write and write a write a novel that would be published outside india and really make it world class and i left my job again to write so i kept kind of doing these things every few years i would have these very sudden needs for intense growth experiences i would leave my job or whatever i was doing at that point of time and i would just thrust myself into them and i remember feeling quite confused and insecure almost about it because every time i would do them uh everybody's reaction around me was i would say very negative right so i remember uh, when i was about to go for the yoga thing i was 33 34 years old and we were at a family dinner and somebody said ki look i never want my kids to grow up like you because uh, you know they you are in your 30s logo ki shaadi ho rahi hai bachche ho rahe hain you are so unrooted restless kabhi yahan hote ho kabhi wahan move karte ho phir ye job pe hote ho phir chhod ke yoga sikh rahe ho ye you know what are you doing at this age you should be settled then when i became a like when i became a writer or like i decided to become a writer i remember my friend at that time he he said ki yaar what are you doing you are uh, with such a checkered career you know you do well then you leave everything then you go to do something random and then you come back and with such a checkered career where do you think you'll go you know from a corporate perspective where you where do you think you'll ever end up so wo sab log you know people used to keep making these things and i would always feel ki i don't know where this is going i just have this strong instinct the strong calling that this is right for me and i would go ahead and do it right uh, the 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 reason i wrote this book was because uh, i learned something completely unexpected and different with the benefit of time after uh, these uh, like you know taking these leaps of faith i learned something which was something very somewhat unexpected that actually the world truly rewards your growth journey if you choose periods of intense growth grow a lot as a human being the return is always i mean i'm not saying that in that same moment the return becomes uh, is is easy the return is always very tough and challenging but over a period of time you grow so much as an individual that the world actually ends up rewarding that for example you know the as i said the return was very checkered but when i when i came back from my first sabbatical i was uh, 2008 i'd gone i'd i'd backpacked um, I I'd come back at the time and Lehman Brothers had collapsed in the US and there were no jobs available I was sleeping in my sister's couch at age 30 I was feeling really lost but I'd grown so much from that travel that it eventually helped me so I started to see this pattern ki 
when you choose these extraordinary growth experiences, you'll have a tough kind of a return, but in the long term, you'll actually accelerate. So I saw kind of a learner's path emerge, not just for me, but there were many uh, or a few people like me from business school who were doing something like uh, going off the straight and narrow mainstream path. And they were having these uh, extraordinary growth experiences. And eventually, their dots really started to connect. So for example, when uh, I think about Whitehead Jr., when I started Vita Junior, uh, just before that, I was the head of discovery in India, right? So, you know, we were meeting Modi, Mr. Modi on uh, Man vs. Wild, this, that, you know, it was a very high profile kind of job. And the next day, as Thomas is here, some of the people in Vita Junior know, I would be kind of alone in a room and make calls all day to people who kept cutting the calls. I would tell them, that coding class hai, bacho ke liye, and log. And I remember once my driver was driving me and he was like, uh, but because I had done writing before, I show up every day, keep giving my input to what I'm doing, eventually something will turn up. So in the writing phase, you go from a blank page to a 300 page novel over years of like just coming up every day with the confidence that it will become something. And there were a lot of rejections. My third novel was rejected 61 times. So when I came to YJ Junior, I was like, I'm just going to show up every day and kuch na kuch hote 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 ban jayega. And I didn't have the usual, I would say, the struggles that entrepreneurs have because I was very comfortable with failure, rejection, the act of bringing something from zero to one. Similarly, surprisingly, uh, we launched White Hat very early in uh, Brazil, US, etc. Because uh, when I backpacked in my early 20s, or uh, when I'd taken my time to backpack, I'd learned that. Uh, you know, the world is much more similar than different because I was uh, in the, like, you know, crossing the Amazon from Brazil to Peru by boat, you know, and meeting people without knowing the language, I could connect with them. So I had this very strong internal conviction that the world is very similar uh, than different and any product that you create from India can go outside. So a lot of choices were built on this, uh, you know, on this kind of notion, which came from experiences that were, uh, you know, very outside the, the straight path. So I wrote this book because um, I felt that so many of you, some of you in the audience are in that very early stage of your lives where when you choose uh, paths that are a little bit out of the mainstream, you'll always have a, just a very, like a, like, you know, very polarizing reaction from people around you. And uh, I kind of tried to capture some rules for whatever it's worth in the book on how to really follow your instinct your soul's calling when you are at those crossroads. Make the decisions that are right for you because you are your own very weird and unique self and, and you, like, you know, can't be compared with anybody around you. And eventually those paths actually end up being uh, working out for you, right? So I think that's why I, in this book, I think the idea was that I would uh, try to share some learnings from this kind of meandering, divergent kind of path and hopefully you know, you don't have to go through the same kind of confusions and insecurities that, you know, really characterize this period of life. So with that, thank you.